Hello and welcome to another video. In this one, we're going to be talking about module get adder. I've actually talked about it before in episode 509. So check out that video. I'll have it linked in the description, but I'll give you a quick recap and talk about how it works. Um, but recently I was trying to upgrade a particular tool that I was writing that uh, introspects the typing module. And so I figured I would show you how model get error, uh, get error actually works and uh, how I ended up figuring out my particular problem. All right, so taking a step back, just to give you an example of module level get adder, you can define get adder and it takes in the attribute name. You know, if you type this, it would be stir to objects, could be anything. Uh, let's just print, uh, I don't know, looking for X. And that, I don't know, return x times 2. <laughs> a very silly example here. Uh, but if we import t and we do t.foo, uh, it'll call the the module level get adder and it allows you to do lazy attributes. Uh, this is often used for deprecation or moving stuff around or lazy imports or other kind of hackery stuff like that. Um, now, interestingly, before module level get adder existed, there was a way to do this already. Uh, and <laughs> uh, let's see if I can make an example of this. Um, basically, to know how this sort of works, uh, every module in uh, sys.modules, uh, what's we do? Sorted sys.modules. Every module in Python that you've imported so far lives in this sys.modules dictionary. Uh, and so you can see quite a lot of modules get imported just from starting up the interpreter. Uh, a few of these are side effects from my um, Python RC file that adds things like a, a PP function, uh, which is pretty pretty. Uh, but anyway, a little off topic. Uh, modules exist in sys.modules. And so you used to, before module level get adder existed, you used to be able to do the same functionality by just making an object and now let's say class C will implement the same exact thing as we did in that other file. Uh, Note it is self x instead of just x here because we are dealing with a object. Uh, being uh, x, and then we'll just do the same return x times two. And yes, I'm in the old REPL, so it's <laughs> I'm manually indenting stuff here. Uh, so we can actually just insert insert a module into this dot modules. Uh, let's call it C. And now if I do import C, um, we get, <laughs> you can see attributes have already been accessed on it. Uh, we get our C that we stuck in assist modules and it sort of acts the same way as our module does. And so people used to use this trick here to make a dynamic module using get adder and Python, I think in Python 3.7, decided to make a, this a first class thing. Okay, so that kind of shows you why uh, not the topic of this video. I want to show you how it actually works and why this is not quite a perfect approximation of how module level get editor works. Uh, in order to frame that, I need to show you what I was working on when I decided to think about this problem and ultimately make this video. Uh, I was upgrading Flakegate typing imports, which is a Flakegate plugin that I have written that helps you write the correct type checking blocks to make sure that you're not accidentally importing symbols on versions that don't support them. Uh, this was a bigger problem when typing was new because symbols were often introduced in patch versions, uh, which was quite annoying because you would uh, you would be in, uh, well, it was probably Travis CI at that point, but you'd be in your CI system, you'd ask for Python 3.5, it would give you Python 3.5.9 or whatever the newest was at that time, and you would never really notice whether you were screwing these things up or not, whether whether you were accidentally, you know, importing type checking in Python 3.5.1. Um, and so this, this ultimately led to lots and lots of weird breakage where CI would pass, but someone would be running, you know, some older patch version of Python and it would break. You know, ultimately breaking semantic versioning here, but you know, this was when typing was provisional, and so they were fairly willy-nilly in how things got inserted or deleted. Uh, now it's not as useful because there's been not too many patch version introductions anymore, and it's mostly just, well, 3.7.2, I think, was the last patch version introduction. Uh, since then, it's mostly just been the major version that introduces stuff. But anyway, this whole list of things is generated in this library because I didn't, I didn't type these out by hand. I have a script that generates them because 
obviously if I type these out by hand, I would get them wrong. Uh, so I wrote a script called build generated. And it turns out that the typing module also has some history of not having double under all specified correctly. Um, and spoilers, well actually, let me show you the old version of this code so I can kind of explain to you why it was broken and then why I fixed it. And then I'll show you the magic that actually fixed it. So if we look at the history of this file. We're actually going to check out the version before this and look at that file. Um, so basically what I need to do in order to collect those symbols is look at the typing.py file in each version of Python and pull out the symbols there. Uh, the easiest, well, <laughs> the laziest way to do that is to import that module and then look at the attributes. Um, but I don't have, I don't, <laughs> I don't have a working interpreter of every single version of Python that I would need to do that. I mean, in theory, I could build them all with Docker and like pull in, you know, a hundred Docker images for each patch version of Python existed, but that, that was just too much work and not, not what I really want to do. And so instead what I do is I just take the source of the file, assume that it's valid syntax in newer versions of Python, or at least within that minor version of Python, and look at the contents of that file. Basically import it and then look at its attributes. And I cheat a little bit here. So <laughs> this is sort of how you can think about the import system working. Basically, you have a dictionary of uh, the name, you read the contents of the file, and you call exec on that with a namespace. And this is sort of sort of how importing works. It's not exactly, and that's actually why I ran into this bug in the first place and why I ended up fixing it. But you can kind of think about it like this, as you know, uh, read the code from the file on disk, compile it to, actually, I don't even think I need this compile. I'm pretty sure exec can just uh, take the string, but. Um, I did it as a compile for some reason, I don't remember. Um, compile it to code and then exec it into a, uh, into a mapping that um, will get all of its names populated there. And so this gives you a dictionary of all of the module globals and then I just threw it into a class as a sort of namespace so that I could look at all of the attributes here and ultimately figure out whether they are the you know actual names that are supposed to be exported or not. Uh, some of them are imported as side effects. Some of them are uh, in double under all, but sometimes double under all is incorrect. And yeah, sometimes there's names that aren't supposed to be exported, but look like public names. Anyway, there's all sorts of stuff here, so you don't have to worry too much about this. But the, but the, the ultimate task that I was trying to do is take a typing.py source file from an uh, related, but not necessarily the same patch version of Python, and import it and then look at its attributes. So that's what this does. Now in Python 3.13, there was actually a change to the typing module, which is uh, pydoctyping, which is why I'm making this video at all. In Python 3.13, they deprecated some of the names, or I guess didn't actually deprecate because uh, there's no warning for them, or maybe they will be warning later. Uh, but there is now a module level get adder in the typing module. And it's used to lazily import a few things, pattern and match from the RE module and the context manager types from context loop. Uh, part of the rationale for this is to speed up import time of the typing module. And the typing module has historically been really, really slow to import. And the RE module, also pretty slow to import. I don't, I think context loop probably pulls in a bunch of stuff and so maybe that's slow as well. Um, but anyway, this is used to defer these imports. And I think uh, deprecate them. Oh, soft deprecated objects. Yeah, costly to create and only created on demand here. Yeah. So basically, uh, there's now a module level get adder. And it turns out that my little trick from before no longer works. Let me show you what my trick from before tried to do and why it ultimately fails. Open up Python. We are going to uh, read the source of this file. Yeah, I should use context manager and close it, whatever. Uh, we have our globals, which is going to be just Dublinter name as typing. And if we exec source and globs, uh, so we need to actually run Python 3.3 source, right? Let's do this again. <laughs> yeah, this is the this is the weirdness where there's like patch version different or like minor version differences. Uh, in Python 3.13, there's an underscore typing. Uh, module where there's a few speed ups uh, implemented there. So let's just redo this again in 3.13. Okay, cool. And then I called, I made a typing object as typing uh, bases and dictionary blobs. 
this makes a class <laughs> that has the namespace contents of whatever's in here. So this is basically what the old code did before. And if we look at like typing dot order dict, uh, we get the typing order dict here, and everything works there. However, if we try and access things like match, which is one of those things that those module level get adders was supposed to handle, you'll notice here that we're not actually able to uh, acquire typing dot match here. Um, and so the module level getter is not firing here. Uh, which kind of makes sense. Normally get adder in classes operates at the class level. And if we look at type of, well, typing is a type. If we look at typing dot get adder, uh, it doesn't have the right signature to, or well, it's not even gonna get called one because we're looking on the type. But if we made the typing module and then looked at match, uh, we get a, a type error here because the get adder that is defined in the module only has one parameter, it doesn't have the self parameter. So this is what I initially tried was, uh, okay, I use this namespace, get adder isn't working because it's supposed to be on the type of the thing, uh, construct it, try it again, oh, it doesn't have the right parameters. How does this actually work? Is ultimately what I was getting to. Okay, so we're 11 minutes in this video and I'm finally explaining to you the thing that I wanted to explain to you, which is that uh, there is actually some magic in modules. Uh, if we look at a module, let's import the OS module. No, that one's frozen, so we gotta pick something else. Uh, uh, typing, sure. You're not frozen, right? Okay, good. Um, if you look at the type of a module, it's not actually just a plain class, which is what I was trying to simulate it with. It's this special module class. And this is also available inside the types module. So if you do types.module type, uh, this is the same class that uh, most modules in Python will have. This isn't necessarily true because I'm pretty sure frozen modules don't have the same type. Well, maybe they do. What about built-in modules? What about, uh, what about modules that are compiled? Oh, okay, maybe they all do have this type. Um, it was just kind of surprising. They don't have to have this type as we saw before when we injected stuff, but I guess most things have this type. Anyway, this type is the answer to how does uh, module level get editor work. And it is slightly different than my little exec hack up here. Uh, and I'll show you how I fixed it. But first I want to show you how I found the code that actually implements module level get editor. And for that, we need to go to the CPython repo. And there's kind of three places where uh, special interpreter-like objects live. They're either in the Python directory, which is where a lot of the like interpreter parts and some like very low level parts of uh, Python live, uh, or they are inside the objects directory. This is where many of the built-in objects, I don't wanna know. <laughs> I don't wanna know what this file does. Maybe I'll look at that later. Um, the objects directory is where a lot of the built-in types exist. And this is actually where the module object one lives. Uh, sometimes it lives in modules if it's a module specific type that's implemented in C. But in our case, we are in objects module object dot C and conventionally they're, they're named as their type like object. I think even there's object object. Object? Oh no, it's just object dot C. Okay, maybe that one's special then. All right, anyway, it's in module object and there is a callback on type. So I type. A pi type something, yeah. Uh, I module def is the actual part of this. Uh, anyway, oh, here it is. I object type, pi module type. This is what I was looking for. So this is how you declare a class in C, uh, a Python class in C. And you can see that it has a few callbacks based on some of the special methods for the type. And the one we're interested in is the get adder O. Uh, I don't remember what the O stands for, but. Uh, oh, I think this is get attribute rather than get adder, because get adder and set adder are up here. Uh, but anyway, we're looking for the module get adder O function. This is how attribute lookup is implemented on the module class. And if we look in here, we have this little bit here. This is kind of the fallback to uh, looking up the attribute normally. So normally it tries to look it up just with a dictionary lookup and uh, error handling here. And if that fails, it's going to look up a function or any attribute with the name getAdder. This is kind of a shortcut in CPython to make a 
a well-known string, this pi ID thing, uh, if you've ever stared too much at the code. So this retrieves the get adder attribute from the module dictionary, which is the things that we got from execing it. And then it will try and call that with a single argument, just the name, and you know return the value. So this is kind of where that difference between get adder with self and attribute name and get adder with exactly one argument comes to. So that's why it's different for modules, and that's why just putting things into a namespace doesn't work as I would, you know, as I expected, but somewhat surprisingly. This is where the, the magic happens. Um, but yeah, that's that's kind of the, the magic here. Uh, there's also, I think, a callback for dir as well in here uh, to implement the other half of get adder, but we didn't even talk about it today, but fine. Trust. Uh, and okay, so with all of that, I wanted to show you how I eventually changed the code to use the module class and work kind of the same as, uh, as we would expect a normal module to work. So, here, and then placate typing imports. If we check out main again, and we look at our file here, I switched from execing into a dictionary to now executing into an instance of that module type. So this underscore typing here will have class module if you call type on it. And then this largely looks the same as before, uh, you know, exec, and we're sticking the values into the double under dict of our module instance. So this is, this is kind of how a module gets gets uh gets built. I mean it's a little bit more <laughs> it's a little bit more formalized and also a little bit more complicated than that and involves a bunch of import import lib stuff and specs and uh callbacks and there's a few peps for how to make dynamic importers and stuff. But this is you know the overly simplified version of how to import and how to make a module from a file contest. Anyway, wanted to show you this long-winded way of how I figured out how model get editor works and ultimately how I ended up fixing my thing for all of our lazy attributes inside of Python 3.13 and uh, learned a little bit more about the innards of how the model type works. I guess the one case, the one case that I know of where it's needed if you're uh, making a module and putting it in system modules. Anyway, hopefully you found this useful. If there are additional things you'd like me to explain, leave a comment below or reach out to me on the various platforms. But thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next one.